Okay, all right, good evening everyone, and I think we're ready to go, so hopefully we won't have any technical difficulties. Welcome to EVST's second, actually third class now, the, uh, the Bible's big story, the gospel promise and fulfilled. Let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight, and we just ask that you would come and be with us. We ask that your spirit would fill this room and, and be be among us. Father God, I pray as we study your word that you would give us understanding as we seek to really understand the, the big story of the Bible and, and really seek to go deep and, and look at how it all points to your son, his work, his finished work on the, on the cross and his exaltation and enthronement. I just pray that you would be with us and guide us. Be with the students, give them the strength and also uh, the fearlessness to, to, to do things more than they thought that they were capable of. In Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things by faith alone. Amen. And uh, we actually have some new guests. So how about we just, uh, can everyone, is it possible for everyone to go around and introduce themselves? Is, is that possible? Uh, let, let's just, let's just, I'll just take a minute and let's everyone introduce themselves, if that's possible. So I'll just begin, I'll, just give me, I'll just call your name and you can just give me, you can just, Give one brief fact about a fact about yourself, okay? So let's, I'll begin with uh, Pastor Henry, just for those, because we actually have people coming in from different circles, and I do want everyone just to be introduced. So, Pastor Henry, can you go ahead, just one fact about yourself? Hi, good evening, classmate. Uh, I am Pastor Henry, uh, the lead pastor of the Lord's Harvest Church, and also involved with this Eastern Visayas School of Theology. Thank you. Great. Uh, I'll just also introduce myself. I'm Tim Spears and uh, a missionary in Region 8, and uh, I like to work out. So that's that's a fun fact. My, my wife and I, we like to work out. So And we like dogs, too. <laughs> so, well, Kuya Boboy, Attorney Boboy, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everybody. I am Boboy Borja, a lawyer by profession, but connected, associated with a global Bible community. Uh, for how many years? <laughs> Thank you. Great. Okay, so Ati Sionik and, and your your husband, it's Dario, right? Can you just introduce yourself? Good evening, everyone. I am Shoni, and this is my husband, Dario. <laughs> I'm Dario from the Lord's Service. From Good evening, Lord's everyone. Service. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you. Uh, Kuyo Louis, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, good evening. I'm Louie Agulio from the Lord Service, one of the leaders. Uh, Pastor Henry Kwa. Great. Nice to have you. So then, uh, Kuya Bob, we just met recently, I think today. Go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. I am uh, Pastor Bob. I am from Life Light Community. I, I serve here in Tacloban City. I'm glad to be able to join this group. Thank you so much. Welcome, Pastor Bob. Uh, Ati Nanette, go ahead. Hi, good evening. I'm Nanette. I'm the leader of the Lord's Harvest. That's all. Thank you. God bless. Lord, Lord's Harvest Babatnon, go ahead. You're on. Just Maybe just wave and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's sound. There's already sound. I see that you're unmuted. So, okay, maybe it's not working. So, anyway, it's good to have Lord's Harvest. We'll just go to the next one. I, uh, let me see here. Um, Kuya, Kuya Sim and Ruth, can you just, in, your group, just introduce yourselves, please? Hi. Hello, we are Simon and Ruth. Fun fact, we are white and from Germany. And you can introduce yourself. We are working uh, with, we are missionaries here in Tacloban City and working together with students. And then this Crystal and Geraldine. Geraldine. Nice to have you. Great to have you tonight. So we, we've known Ruth, uh, Auntie Ruth and Simon for one year now, right? It's over almost a year. It's almost a year. So uh, anyway, good to have you. Kuya Danny, can you go ahead? Hi, good evening, classmates, uh, Pastor Tim. 
I'm Danny Pantebella. I'm an architect by profession. I belong to Tacloban Bible Community. I'm so glad to be uh, able to attend this class. Uh, I am looking forward to learning a lot about the big picture of the Bible. So welcome everyone. See you. God bless. Great to have you. Okay, Bethany, you're on. It's your turn. H hang on. I, Hi, go ahead. I unmuted it. I am the handsome teacher's wife. Uh, my name is Bethany. <laughs> so I'm just here to learn and observe my husband teaching. <laughs> she's, she's my better half. She's my better half. <laughs> Carl, go ahead. You should join us at uh, Hermeneutics. Yeah. <laughs> I should. I need to learn. <laughs> It's good to have you, Bethany. <laughs> Go ahead, Carl. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. I'm from the Lord's Harvest, Babat Thank Great. you. Great to have you, Carl. June and May, can you just introduce yourself? Kuya June. Hello. Hello, classmate. Good evening. I'm Felipe Dako Jr. Just call me June. And here's my wife, May, from the Lord's Harvest, Tacloban. Nice good to see you. Great. Okay, next, uh, Kareen. Can you go ahead, Ati Kareen? Uh, she might be lag. There might be lag. Loading. Hi. Good evening. I, I think there's a, a a small lag, so we'll just we'll just continue. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. There's a little bit of a lag, so it's great to have you, Ati Kareen. Uh, let's go to Haggai. Haggai Kwa. Hello. I'm Haggai from the Lord's Harvest, and I'm currently in first year college. Great to have you, Haggai. It's good to see you again. Yeah, he's my son. I know. He still has his hair, too. <laughs> Great to have you. Uh, Ati Kea, go ahead. Good evening. I'm Kea Banyes. I'm under the Lord's Harvest. Uh, with Pastor Henry Kwa, and I'm a farmer musician, a mother of three. <laughs> Great to have you again, Atikea. Okay, so um, Kuya Boogie, Kuya Boogie, I, maybe I'm getting that wrong, I don't know. <laughs> Forgive me if I am. Go ahead. Oh, Steve, good evening. Hi, I'm Dennis Villegas, call me Boogie for short. And uh, Lord Harvest, um, for Henry, and thank you so much. It's good to see you again. I, I didn't realize until I saw your face. So great to see you, Boogie. Okay, uh, who's next? Let me see here. Uh, Ati Ivy, can you go ahead? Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Pastor Tim. Good evening. I'm Ivy. I'm from Tacloban Bible Community under Pastor Edwin's leadership. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Nice to, nice to have you here tonight. Okay, uh, Ati Joanna. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joanna Rose Amancio from the Club and Bible Community. That's all. Thank you. It's great to have you. So who do we have left? I'm Everyone, it's moving on me here. So let me see here. Okay, and then we'll, we'll just go to the next one. Who, who have I not called on yet? Um, uh, is it when Adiza? It, when when Adiza? Can you yes. introduce? Yourself? Go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm Wen Adiza from Tacloban Bible Community. Okay, that's all. Nice to have you here tonight. Thank you for joining, Pastor June Olivar. Go ahead. I missed you. Sorry, Pasencia. <laughs> Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, June Ulaivar uh, from Mahaplag, Leti. Sorry, uh, uh, poor ang among signal dress Mahaplag. <laughs> it's okay. If, if ever you get disconnected, for anyone, if you're disconnected or you lose your, your signal, we will load this by the end of the week on YouTube so you can miss, you can watch the sections that you miss. So, um, you know, people are sending me messages apologizing. No need to apologize. I understand the signal situation. So it's great to have you, Pastor June. Thank you for striving through this 
poor signal sometimes in Leite, so great. Who else is left? Who hasn't been introduced that wants to introduce themselves? If, if your signal's not so good, I don't want to pressure you, but so great. Welcome again to EVST's third class that we're offering this year, The Bible's Big Story, The Gospel Promise and Fulfilled. And so this is the first evening, and uh, I'm very excited to be teaching this. This is the first time that I'm teaching a class like this. I, I did teach a shorter module course, but uh, it was it was a tangential, uh, a slightly different topic, but connected. And so I I am personally very excited to be teaching this class. So I hope that it will be a blessing to you, and maybe some things will will be a, a reminder to you that you that you've already known, and then maybe there'll be some new things that that you have not yet considered before. And so I just really want to emphasize at the outset of this course: do not be stressed. Do not be afraid. The spirit is with us. <laughs> so maybe you'll finish the evening and you'll be so scared or uh, I don't want you to be afraid. So uh, we'll, go we'll go slow tonight. If, if we don't get through all of the PowerPoint, there's always next week. So uh, I'll go slowly through, through the, the lecture tonight. We'll stop and have a time of discussion. Do not hesitate. If you have a question, just let me finish my sentence and then don't hesitate to just interrupt me because I can't see everyone. Just unmute your mic and just say, uh, Tim or Kuya Tim or Pastor Tim, just, I have a, I have a question. And then we'll just stop the, the, con the, the lecture and answer the question. That, that's how the format we, we typically have. So don't hesitate to interrupt. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's not a problem at all. I will not be offended. If something is not making sense, just, just, just ask ask for some clarification, okay? So I really want to emphasize our, our, our saying this year, starting this new journey has been long pressure. So there's no pressure, okay? So uh, maybe after this class, you're, you're afraid, you can message Pastor Henry, you can message myself, and we can encourage you. We can also find a way to, to make something work for you. So I really want to stress uh, at the outset, there's no pressure. I, I, this is a journey. I hope that it will be a blessing to each one of us. I, I, I'm excited, and, and I know that the, the Spirit will, will be with us. So tonight's session is session number one. We're going to have at least 12 sessions, possibly 13. We'll see, we'll see what happens. And so this is the introduction to the course. Uh, tonight, we're going to be focusing on uh, the syllabus review, uh, application and then introductory issues and then we might not get through all these things it's fine we'll just continue on next week so let's just do a quick overview of what we'll be doing tonight so specifically we will be uh, just introducing you to some of you maybe this is your first night you're unfamiliar with EVST so I do want to walk us through just some of uh, the resources I'll take you to the, to the YouTube channel that we have and also to our private group. And we will also go to, I will show you the, I will show you the application that everyone needs to fill out. So the, uh, it, it, it's just because we're moving towards, uh, we're an official school. And so we, we want to be, be keeping good academic records uh, for the future and also for the present. And so we'll talk through the application it's easy to fill out. You can return it in the next two or three weeks. And, but it, it really helps us to have record keeping purposes. The second thing we'll be doing is reviewing the syllabus. So we'll go over the, the, the requirements for the course. The, the third thing that we will be doing is going into introductory issues. So we will start really unpacking the text and, and really ton tonight towards the end of this first session, we'll start looking at foundational texts that describe the gospel and and uh, introductory issues that really help us to see that big picture so that when we go back and we and we we track the big story of the Bible we will have a clear roadmap and everyone who's traveling before you wanted a roadmap now we have the GPS on the phone right but you need to have that GPS you need to have that roadmap to see where you're going. And the same is true for, for the Word of God. We, we do need to have a roadmap as we travel through uh, the history of Revelation, the history of redemption, which is the history of salvation, 
uh, essentially the big story. And so tonight we'll be looking at some foundational passages of Scripture that describe and connect the gospel to other key themes, and that will really set us up for then working through those big events of salvation history, the big story of the Bible in, in the Old Testament. So that's kind of the, the way we're going. And then lastly, I know you don't want to see this, but <laughs> homework. We will be looking at homework at the end. So for those who want to take this for credit, there is going to be some homework. And uh, don't be afraid. Uh, for those of you that have already been receiving my graded assignments, I am merciful and I'm not someone who has a, uh, a fist. I, I really want to be uh, merciful. And uh, the homework will be very helpful for you, really applying and really seeing these things, these principles for yourself, so that you can also apply them in, in different passages. All right, so at this time, let's go ahead. Let's just, I just want to talk through the application that I will post this on the Facebook page after this class, either later tonight or first thing in the morning. And uh, I, just, I just want to talk through it briefly with you. So um, just give me one second here. So here's the, the application for, here's the application that I will post. And this is a, a PDF document that you can just type in. So you'll be able to save this to your computer. Uh, just type in your, 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 the answers or the information and then save it as a PDF and send it back to me. There's no need to print it out. There's no need to handwrite. There'll be slots where you can just, you can just type it just like a Word document or a, a, if you're using Apple, a, a Pages document. And so just working through this uh, application of admission, uh, the, the, what I want to highlight here is there's several different, there's several different tracks that we are offering. Um, we're offering a, a certificate of ministry and then also a certificate of ministry through um, Baptist Theological College in Cebu, okay? And then the lowest that we're offering is this uh, certificate of attendance, okay? So in these other tracks here, um, in these other tracks, you're, 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 you're taking it for credit. So you'll have attendance requirements, you'll have homework requirements. There'll be two tests in the semester that are open book, open notes, open Bible, open notes. So there, there will be two tests, but they will not be, uh, they will not be really stressful. Um, We'll talk in the syllabus. We'll discuss those those tests more. Now, there is another. If you're taking the certificate of theology, there is a different. There is a, a little bit larger of a application. I'm going to post two. There is. If you can look up here at the top, there's an application of admission practical track, and then also academic track. So some of you have already signed up for the certificate of theology, and. Um, uh, if, if you're going to apply for the Certificate of Theology, it's, it's a different application. So I will post both of, of these. Most of you, I think, in this evening will be signing up probably for the Certificate of, Min of Ministry via Baptist Theological College in Cebu. That's, that's the, the, the main, uh, that's the course that you're, uh, the, the track that you're probably looking at signing up. Okay, and then you're just going to fill out the rest of the information here, your personal information, your contact information, your, your uh, education background, so just um, uh, the years you attended, if you have a high school diploma, your school's name, and then just the address. And then if you have any other certifications here, if, you, if you're an ordained pastor, if you're a licensed pastor, if you have a, a professional degree, um, you can just list it here as well. And then the last part that we do need you to fill out is this religious background. So this, this is your church name. The, if, if your church is affiliated, if it's just independent, you would just put in independent here. The address, your pastor's name, his email and phone number. And then, and then just if you have a, a, a position in the church, are you just a member? Are you a pastor? Are you an elder, a deacon, or, or some other position? And then if you have a ministry, you don't have to have a ministry. Um, 
but if you have a ministry, we, we would like to know what it is. And then just, just fill out the rest of these. Um, we will be posting tomorrow as well uh, the, the EVST Statement of Faith. If you can just look at that and also just check that you've read. And you do, we're not asking that you have to sign off as if you're joining a, you're joining a church. We just want you to acknowledge that, that this is our position. And, and as, as a community that's learning, that you would just respect that position while you attend, while you attend our, our, uh, our classes, our courses. Okay. So we're not ex ex expecting that you really sign off on all those different positions, but that you at least recognize this is the position and, and I will respect that uh, that position while, while I'm here. It, it it will just make everything easy. And and the statement of faith is when you read it, you're most people would say, okay, it's it's not it's not there's not a lot of details. It's it's more basic, um, but we do need you to sign off on that. And then also there will be a, an ethics pledge, and um, uh, we'll also be posting that tomorrow as well. And then lastly. We do want to. We do want you to sign off that um, on this last, this last comment here. I am currently in good standing with my church, or am currently working with the men mentor towards that goal. Okay, so uh, hopefully that that describes you, one of those categories. And so we do want you you to you, to, to sign off on that. So you can either you're in a good standing, or you're or you're working with someone. Uh, to meet that good standing. So maybe you're moving towards church membership. Maybe you're, you're working through some issues, but you're working with your pastor or, or some type of mentor. So um, uh, we, we, do, we do need you to, to, to sign off there because we, we don't want someone uh, in our school where there's, there's – because this education is, is not only for our knowledge, not only for our personal transformation, but the end goal of our programs is that we're serving others and we're serving in, in the church. And so um, for us just to be learning and receiving but not giving back, um, our philosophy is no, the end is, is to be giving back both others and then, and then also in, in the life of the church. And so this is, this is moving towards that goal, okay? Um, and then lastly, just, just go ahead and if you were referred to us by, by someone or something, just, just we would like to know how you were referred to EBST. And, and if it's a person, just give us the name. And then also uh, electronic signature. So just type out your name. Again, you can just type out your name and uh, that, that will suffice for your signature. And then you can just email it back. You can just email it back to, to us. Uh, there is an email at the bottom. Uh, there's an email somewhere here. I think it's at the bottom. Um, anyway, um, you can just, you can send it back via email. You can Facebook message us this PDF. However you want to get it back to us is fine. You can even just send the, the PDF to EVST's, to EVST's group page. Okay. Um, if you're having difficulty getting that back to us, just send me a private message on Facebook and, and, and we'll help you get, uh, get that taken care of. Any comments or questions about the application? It should be self-explanatory. Would you require documents like diploma in high school or diploma in college to yeah. be submitted? So, so that's a great question, Koya Boy. So, for the academic track application, eventually we're going to need, we will need that if if we're because long term we're pursuing at least the the MA the, the higher level. If if you're enrolled in a higher level, the CT or the MAT. We're, we're, we're pursuing some form of accreditation. And so we would need those backups eventually. But for those that are enrolled in the certificate of, min, of ministry, we're not necessarily looking for that. We just want to have this information. Maybe down the road, we, we, would, we would need that information. But for now, this, this information would suffice. Um, even if you're going to do the academic admission, uh, the, the academic application, uh, application for admission, Right now, we don't need those backups, but maybe um, towards the end of the semester, maybe next semester, you know, maybe you can start thinking about gathering them. Yeah, but for now, we just really want we want the application to be submitted, so we have we have records of, of who you are, of who our students are, and, and the type of program that, that you're looking for. I do want to say one other thing: this certificate of attendance here, you can sign up 
for the ministry, the certificate in ministry, but you, if you feel that you can't do the assignments, maybe they're too much for you, or maybe you can't commit to that, you can, you can sign up for their certificate of attendance. And once you've completed the program uh, and attended all the different uh, courses and just the classes, we will give you a certificate certifying that you've received the knowledge um, and, and there, there is some type of, of recognition of the work that you've done. We, we can't give you the certificate of ministry though because we'll, we'll talk about this later. Part of the certificate of ministry is that you've not only learned the information, but you've also applied it and you have a level of proficiency. So that's part of the, that's part of the, the learning, the practicing, and then the testing part. Okay, so if you're just doing the, the, the knowledge part, you're just receiving the knowledge. We can at least re recognize that, that you, you, you have met that level of, um, you have been given that information. So that's really the certificate of ministry. I mean, the certificate of attendance. Yeah. Okay, great. I don't see any, I don't see any other questions I'm looking through here. So what I'll do is I'm going to post on both. There's two groups. There's the hermeneutics from last night and then also the Bible's big story. I will post these applications on the group pages and just, just download it when you have a chance and just fill it out. And then you can Facebook message me, the one that applies to you. You can Facebook message me or email me um, that application back. And, and two to three weeks is fine. No rush. Uh, maybe you want to talk to, to someone to, to really to go into the details. That, that's fine as well. The one other thing that you see up here is we do want a picture. We do want a picture, again, for our records. Um, uh, we do want a picture. You don't have to print it out. We just, we're looking for that. We're looking for that uh, electronic copy. I think at the local picture places, you can get just electronic. You can bring a USB and just take your picture, but not print anything out and just get the, the electronic copy. So um, we would like you eventually in the next two or three weeks also to send us these pictures for our records. Okay. And that's in standard uh, policy for, for schools. Um, okay. Any other comments or questions, or I'm going to move on if there's none. Uh, Pastor Ding. Yeah, go ahead. I would like to share a clarification. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the, the three programs. Okay. The highest program is the certificate in ministry via Baptist Theological College in Cebu. And the, next, the lower one is the Certificate in Ministry via ITIM. ITIM stands for Institute for Training in Ministry. The difference between the two is the assignment. Okay, It's only the assignment. The difference between the two is the assignment. However, if you feel, if you feel that it is heavy for you, you can downgrade it to certificate of attendance so you don't need to make an assignment as long as you just attend or if you cannot attend there is a recorded youtube video you can uh, you can watch that later in your time jan there is an instruction that uh, if you have watched it then you will uh, submit uh, you will uh, post that in the facebook uh, group chat that you have watched that video so it's easy, there is no stress for this class. So I suggest don't be stressed, just check certificate in ministry. It's either via Baptist Theological College in Cebu or certificate in ministry via ITIM. Yeah. If you feel it is pressurized, you are pressuring this, then you downgrade to certificate of attendance. So Tim and I are very much graceful, full of patience, and full of mercy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? One. One further clarification. No, that's so true. Um, most of us, who, if you're taking this course with this video, with this, most of us, you would want to sign up for their certificate in ministry. Okay, v via Baptist Theological College. The certificate in ministry via I-Team is even a downgrade, and the assignments are not even, yeah, it's really a different level. So for, mo for the most part, if you're taking the courses with us, if you're doing the assignments through this, this session, you will want to check that third box. 
The, the second box is really because th there's another curriculum that's going to be offered to those in the province. They don't have to attend. It, it's really a lower step down. So just to further clarify what Pastor Henry is saying, most of us will want to, will want to do the, the certificate in ministry. Now, there are some who are attending tonight that have already signed up for the certificate in, in theology. So those who are here with the certificate in theology, you would want to um, do the other application, which I'm going to post, and, and, and click the box for a certificate in theology, okay? So, so you're, you're already committed to the higher level because you're in the other class. You cannot downgrade. So you are there. Unless it becomes very stressful, we can always adjust. So don't be afraid, like Pastor Henry said. We can always adjust. Uh, we, we want it to work for you. Yeah. So. Great. Thank you for the clarification, pa Pastor Henry. That, that was very helpful. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go ahead. So before we, before we move on, I do want to just introduce you to the YouTube, uh, the YouTube channel and also the, the, the Facebook group. So, so you really have a, at least an understanding of how it works so you can get the information that you need. All right. So if everyone can see that we're right now in EVST's the big story of the Bible. Everyone can see that here. Everyone can see this. Now, if you look here, there's different tabs. There's different tabs for, um, uh, for different parts of the Facebook group. Okay. So there, there's an about tab. This gives you information for this gives you information for the group itself. You have this discussion tab. The discussion tab gives you a, a history of all the different of all the different uh, things that we post. Okay, so this gives you a timeline. You can see the timeline. You can see the history. Um, and then and then w later we'll use the rooms. The rooms where we can come together and we can have discussions. It's a new option on Facebook. The, the thing I wanna draw your attention to is this tab here called files. Here is where everything is posted. Okay, you see the most recent file is posted is the, the syllabus. If you look down here, we had a former class in here. So this is all the history of the former class. So this, tab, this file tab is where all the, the homework is gonna be posted, the different notes, different various files okay so um i want you to see this so that whenever you're missing a file when you're looking for a file um uh just go here and just go to this file to, to, to this tab section this is really the control this is really the control um place for uh for the group okay is everyone tracking with me there okay great all right so then uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. The other thing I want to go to now is our channel. So you would want to type in interpreting the word as our channel. And here it is. And what, we'll, what we have here is we have all our videos, all the classes are posted here and then, and then related workshops. Uh, so if you can just look here, these are the most recent. I can go to this tab here again. If you can, if you can really see here, there's this, these tabs that travel across the top. There's channels, there's, there's play, playlists. Um, and so going to videos, this gives you a history of all the different videos for the courses that we've offered. And um, when we start a new class, we, we create a playlist. So if you can look here, we have several different play, playlists for the different classes or courses that we've offered. So so looking at, we'll just go to the, the course that we just finished, Christianity 101. So uh, if I click on Christianity 101, there are the courses that we've, that we've offered. So you can always go back. You can watch other courses that you haven't taken. You, you can watch the course. So if, 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 you miss the, if you miss the course, so for example, for the, for the most recent, we have uh, hermeneutics course and so there are the three the three new courses that posted so each week we'll, we will post the the different courses okay so that should be self-explanatory now I would recommend I do I do share them onto the Facebook group but I would recommend if you can subscribing just because as soon as I post it sometimes I'll post it 
and then it takes hours to actually load up and then I won't, I'm not able to share it till the next day. So if you want the, the, the quickest way to get access, you'd want to subscribe to this channel. And then as soon as it actually posts, you'll get a notification bell and you'll have access to it. Let, let's go ahead now. Let's begin the syllabus. So I'm just going to talk through some of these things and be brief. If you have a question, uh, don't hesitate to, to stop me. I do want to just highlight my my email address. So here you have my email and also my Facebook name. So if you're not my friend, if you're not my friend on, on Facebook, go ahead and friend request me. And then we, if, if you want, if you have a question for the class, you can just send me a, a message on Facebook Messenger. And when you submit your assignments, just email me through this, the emails right here, okay? All right, so let's just do a quick uh, introduction to the course. I'll just read through some of these things. I won't touch on everything. It's posted on the group. You can just download it later at your convenience. BT10, so BT10 is the course description for the Certificate of Ministry program. And then BT101 is for the Certificate in Theology, okay? BT10, BT101, BT stands for Biblical Theology. Uh, BT10, BT101 is a course that highlights and describes the grand narrative of the scriptures. Its design is to describe the big story that the scripture proclaims in unity with its 66 books. This course will describe that story and relate specific fundamental passages of scripture to that big story. The course will also guide the student through these passages in order to help them understand and relate similar passages of scripture to the big story. The course will also include a section concerning applying the knowledge and methods taught in the life of the church. Specifically, it will guide the student in applying the content and its method in a small group setting, teaching and preaching context. And so essentially what we're doing here is this course, to really give you in a nutshell, we're tracking through, through scripture the big story, looking at the major the major turning points in salvation history. And we're looking at a, a method to, to relate those specific stories with the bigger story. Okay. So we're, we're looking at a method. We're also giving you facts and, and, and information to make those, the, those connections with the smaller story and the bigger story. And then we're, in teaching up uh, in teaching you both the content and the method the hope and the prayer for me as a teacher is that you can look at other stories and you can see the connections with that big story. So my, my desire isn't just that you say, wow, that's the big story of the gospel. That's amazing. Praise God. I want you to actually apply those practices in other contexts. So that's really the goal. That's really the goal of the class. Uh, moving on here. So course objectives. Number one, to understand and describe the Bible's big story. So I want you to, to see that big story and to be able to describe it, okay? Uh, number two, I want you to be familiar with various Old Testament passages of Scripture and relate them to the, the Bible's big story. So, so if you're in the prophets, you should be able to look at those, you should be able to look at the prophetic texts and be able to connect them to the big story. If you're in the Psalms, the same thing. If you're in, if you're in, uh, the historical books or the law, uh, we need to see that connection with the big story. And so that's really the, the, the second goal. And then number three is applying these truths, these methods in small group teaching and preaching context. So that's really the, that's really the end game here. I, I want you to be practicing this, okay? Um, course outline. So I'm just going to give you the, this is the big these are the big items that we're going through. So in, in, in a sense, you can actually see the big story kind of unfolding before your eyes. Um, uh, so tonight we have the introduction to the course where we're discussing observations, uh, asking good questions. And so I'm, I'm setting you up to, to be good investigators, to be able to apply the method. Um, uh, the, the second part of of the PowerPoint will be defining the gospel and its relationship to the Old Testament. And then also looking at the relationship, because if, if, if you were to, if, if I were to send you into the Old Testament and say, go find gospel in the Old Testament, 
the word is used in the Old Testament, but it's not so common. And so you might, a lot of people have said, oh, the gospel's not really in the Old Testament. Even the most extreme would say, the Old Testament is law, the New Testament is grace. <laughs> and what they mean is salvation. And this is, this is, this is big, and in, in especially in American, uh, American church. The Old Testament is, is work salvation, and then the New Testament is a salvation of grace. And that is a very bad reading of the Old Testament uh, and the Scripture. But, but that's, really, that's really how people can, and, and maybe all of us have fallen into that trap at some level. And so we want to say, no, 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 no. If a closer reading of the Scripture, uh, the gospel is all over the Old Testament. And so what, I want, what we're going to do later tonight, if not next week, is, is, is identify the gospel clearly, define it clearly in the New Testament, and then look in those definitions in the New Testament you're going to see relationships of the gospel to covenant, to kingdom, okay? And then when you go to the Old Testament, there's kingdom everywhere. There's covenant everywhere. And so a lot of times the gospel, uh, even sacrifice, and so uh, looking at sacrifice, looking at covenant, looking at, at kingdom, um, the gospel is there. It's just not in the categories that we're familiar with, okay? And so uh, really we need to set that groundwork before we get into the big story. So, so we're really looking, we're, we're reading wisely, all right? So that's really the goal for tonight, and it's probably going to end up going into, uh, into next week. And then, and then now we're into the bread and butter. So uh, through the, the next week and following, we'll be looking at the gospel promise. And so the, the major points that we'll be looking at is – uh, creation by the word. So I'm giving you a hint. Creation by the word uh, and God's covenant with Adam. So we'll look at uh, God's covenant with Adam and creation by the word. And there's a hint. You might see Christ in that, in that statement. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, B, uh, man's fall, judgment, and the first promise of the gospel. So it's there. It's there at the beginning of, if you're looking, it's there at the beginning of, of Genesis. And then C is the judgment of the world, the salvation of Noah, and God's covenant with Noah. So again, this idea of covenant is, 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 is coming up again. And then D would be God's covenant with Abraham and the gospel. So uh, in, in Genesis 12 and following, uh, with God's covenant with Abraham, the gospel is also present there. So we need to be looking for that. And uh, E, God's salvation of Israel and his judgment upon Egypt. So we'll look at the great, the great deliverance from Egypt. Uh, F, the old covenant. So this is the, some people would say the Mosaic covenant. Uh, others would call it the, 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 the law of Moses. Okay, so there's different ways of, of referring to the old covenant. Uh, God's revelation of his name, his law, and the gospel. So it's there. Again, it's there uh, if we're looking. Uh, and then G is God's covenant with David, his kingdom, and the gospel. And so again, you have now, we'll be looking at the Davidic covenant and, and the promise of this eternal kingdom that will have no end. And again, uh, in the son of David, we will see the gospel. We will see the idea of faith, the call to have faith in the son of David. Uh, and then H is uh, Israel is unsuccessful in their call to obey God. And so they're, they're, uh, the, the last, the, the, the end of our, our discussion in, in the Old Testament is Israel's judgment, exile, uh, and promise of salvation from sin through the servant of the Lord. And so we will conclude our Old Testament study with the servant of the Lord, the, the servant of Yahweh in Isaiah. And there's so many more passages, we just don't have time, but, but, but that, that will be a good uh, ending point, anticipating this coming salvation. And then the, the, ma the third major point of our, of our class will go into the gospel fulfilled. Already, but not yet. So I want us to be thinking about that already, but not yet. And so already God's judgment and salvation in, uh, occurs in the death, resurrection, and exaltation of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so you're also seeing in connection with this, you're, you're seeing salvation, you're seeing judgment. And so how is this seen in Christ's death, resurrection, exaltation? We'll look at that this semester. And then already the new covenant and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So uh, uh, we will look at 
the the fact that the new covenant is is here you we we celebrate it in our churches all the time maybe you're familiar maybe you're not i hope that by the end of this class you will be very you will embrace the new covenant because we celebrate it very often in our churches and uh looking that in connection with the gospel and we should see the, the, the connection there and then already in new creation so anyone who is in christ he is a new creature the old has passed the new has come and so that is really going back to to language from from genesis and so uh we are new creatures in christ and so we will look at new creation by faith by faith in christ in his body the church um but then the last two points not yet not yet there's there uh, uh we ha we we have we have not yet received we, we have new life we have new life in our spiritual regeneration but we have not yet received received the redemption of our bodies and so we will be discussing uh the the first the return of the king and the final judgment of the world and also new creation waiting for the final resurrection and the new heavens and the new earth and so this uh, some will say from garden to garden, <laughs> from garden to garden. So Genesis 1, uh, Genesis 1 and 2, going to Revelation 22. So we will end uh, in the new garden, the new, the new heavens and the new earth. And so that's really the, the, the bird's eye view of this course. And um, uh, yeah, so I hope that you're excited. I, I'm excited to, to be working working through it of uh, course materials so you're you're assigned materials you do not have to buy anything uh, I want you to have I want you to have a Bible that you're very comfortable in so you should have if you're if your Bible that you're more most comfortable in is what I what I that's fine if it's Tagalog that's fine if it's Cebuano that's fine if it's English if you want to read in English that's fine but I want I want you to be using a Bible that you're very comfortable in and then I do for those who are, are good in English I do want you to be using, I do want you to be using uh, some of these other translations. Okay, so uh, uh, it will be very helpful in, in some of the assignments. So New King James, New American Standard, ESV. Uh, that's my favorite. That's my wife's favorite. Uh, although I'm becoming, I am really starting to like the CSB, uh, the NIV and the NLT. So these are the major versions, and so. You don't have to buy them. There's access. So access on stepbible.org, access on Bible Gateway, access on Bible Hub. All of these websites have these translations and many, many more. So uh, I do want you to be using these other websites, uh, but I don't want you to go out and buy anything. Okay, you don't need to go out and buy. All right. And then, of course, for those of you who want to go deep, uh, theology on the web. That's from our other class, but I've included it there uh, as very optional, very optional. Um, let me just take a pause. Any quick questions or comments before we move on? All right, let, let's, let's, let's go through this rather quickly, then we can take our first break. Um, methods of instruction, I've already mentioned this. We will have lectures, we will have class discussion, we will have practice and workshops, the, the homework, and then we'll have testing. And so those are really four levels of, four types of of methods of, of learning that we're going to be implementing because we want to we want to make sure that you're gaining the knowledge you're practicing uh, and then you're also uh, you're, we're, we're testing for some form of proficiency okay but I do want to emphasize the tests are not you should not be stressed about the tests uh, I'll be very specific in what I'm looking for it will be an open Bible it will also be open notes if you take notes during the semester so you should not be stressed um, so just going through here, uh, uh, course requirements, there is class attendance. So you are required to attend for those who are taking this for credit, or even if you're just taking it for, for the certificate of attendance, you're required to attend all the classes. So you're attended to require, even if you're late, you need to go watch uh, the, the, the portion that you missed. If you had to leave early, that's fine. Um, I'm not taking attendance. So meaning to say that if you show up a half an hour late, I'm not going to take off, you know, the old school, you would lose points if you missed three classes, Cy Young. There's, this is a new era. No, no tardiness, no anything. Uh, you will at the end of the semester sign a document saying, I watched all of the classes. So, so if you come in 30 minutes late, that's fine. If it's Filipino time, that's fine. No, no, no problem. <laughs> no problem. I do need you to go watch the first half hour on YouTube. Okay. So, 
the end of the semester, I will have a form that says I watched all of the, a pledge page that I watched, I attended whether live or delayed all of the, all of the classes. So um, even if you're three weeks late and you haven't been able to get back to watch one, that's fine. You still need to go back and watch that, that first or second class, whatever your class you missed. So um, by the end of the semester, all the classes should be watched. All right, um, assignments and workshops. I am, for those enrolled in the CM program, the Certificate of, of Ministry, uh, you will be working on the homework in groups. So you can form your own groups. You can, you can, uh, you'll do the assignments together and you'll hand them in. One person will email it to me. You will make a list of who's in your group and one person will just email it to me, okay? You will receive the same grade. So uh, the only thing I do require is that if you're working in a group, that, that everyone is pulling their weight. Um, I will leave that between you and God, but when you submit your assignment, uh, you're, you're submitting it um, saying that, that both of you or whoever it is, three or four or five, if it's, if it's five, that everyone was really involved. Um, any large group more than five, I do want to know because I will maybe bump up the requirements a little bit so that, so that it's fair, okay? So because if you have 10 versus, 10 versus two or three, it's not, it's not fair. So, um, and you'll see how I can bump it up. When we go to the first assignment at the end of tonight, you'll see how, okay, that makes sense. Um, the assignments are pretty much making observations and, and making questions in preparation for the next lecture. That, that's, that's what we'll, that, that is what the assignments will be. So for a group of two or three, I'll assign maybe 10 questions and observations. If your group is five or more, I'll, send, I'll assign 20, something like that. So I'll just make an adjustment. So you have to do more work depending upon the group. The, the other thing I want to say is that I cannot grade every week. It's impossible. I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, they were saying that the, some of the students are saying they're up to their neck in some of these assignments. I, I'm up to my neck in grading. I cannot grade every week. So what we will do for these assignments is every week you turn in your assignment as if I'm going to grade it. Um, I will just look at your assignment to make sure that you fulfilled the assignment. So let's say I asked for 10 questions and observations. I'm just looking down. Okay, he com she, she, they completed the assignment, plus 10, plus five, whatever it is, okay? Occasionally, I will take one assignment and then I will grade it, okay? So you don't know when that is. <laughs> so, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, um, each week it'll be a participate, a completion grade, and then I'll occasionally take an assignment and grade it, okay? So you should be turning every assignment in as if I were to grade it, but but uh, I won't grade every single one every week. But if you if you complete it, you will get you will get full credit. So you'll get ten out of ten points, five out of five points, fifteen out of fifteen points. So um, that's that's how we'll do it. Okay. Um, and then and then for those for those in the um, I am going to require this. I'm still thinking about the CM. I I, I need to talk to Henry a little bit more. Cigarado for. CT, which is Certificate of Theology, you need to prepare, you need to pick one passage and you need to prepare a, a, a sermon project, a Bible study, or a, or a Sunday school lesson, okay? So for CT, Cigarado, you have to do this. We're doing this in hermeneutics. I'm not sure yet for CM. Maybe I'll have it as a group again, or maybe I'll split you up into two or three. So um, we'll see. I have to think about that some more, okay? But for sure, this would be a big benefit for you. So um, let me think about that. I'll have an answer by next week. I need to talk to, 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 to Pastor Henry about this. You know, my, my teacher says I want to give it to you, but I don't want to, over, I don't want to overburden you. So let, let, me, let me think about that some more. And then maybe you're excited. Maybe you're excited, and uh, maybe we'll do that. So, so let me think about that. And then lastly, there is a midterm and a final. Again, it's open Bible, open notes. If you're taking good notes, if you're highlighting, um, you're, you're going to do a really good job. It's, it's, it's going to be clear what I'm looking for. You're going to have plenty of time. It's not, it's not going to fake you out. Those who are not watching the classes, those who are not taking notes, maybe you will be in trouble, okay? But if you're taking notes, if you're watching the classes, uh, I'll have a, a study sheet. It's open Bible, open notes. You, you'll be fine. So again... The purpose of the midterm and the final is not to crush. It's not to, it's not to make it difficult. But 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 there, it is to say that that you need to be you need to be uh, 
paying attention and, and taking notes in, in class. So those who are doing what they're supposed to be doing, it will be good for you. It will go well for you, okay? So just, just to be aware there. All right, so grade, grade, grade point system, you can look at that on your own time. I'm not gonna go into that. Um, rules, regulations, and additional requirements. Just read this on your own time. This is just general procedural things. You should read through it. Um, a lot of this is, is just common sense. It's a Christian moral, so it's not, not specific. I do want to say that the one thing that is unique to me, uh, there's no copy and pasting for anything whatsoever. Okay, so, you know, I understand that sometimes, you know, there might be a place for it outside of my class. You can do it. It just, it just is going to be easy. So there's just no copy and pasting. If you're gonna, if you're gonna write something out, you're gonna write out a verse. Just type it out. I, that's just, it just makes it easy. The whole point is, I want you to be doing your own work. Um, and so uh, I just, in the past, it gets confusing, and then people are taking advantage. And I'm not saying you would take advantage or anything, but it's just, it's easy for everyone. So there's just no copy and pasting. Period. Just type out your own work, and if you if you quote someone, which you won't really need to, maybe in your sermon project you would quote someone, but if you quote, um, we'll talk later about how to cite. But just just use it. Just use a quotation. This person said this, and then just just put quotations. There's you can have many of those. I I'm, I I am a firm believer in quoting other people. It's fine. Um, there's no shame in quoting. I quote a lot of people, so. I have a quote tonight in our PowerPoint, so I don't want to, I don't want you to. Um, we just need to to give credit where credits due, okay? And then let me see here. What else do we have? Um, oh, the last thing is I do want when you turn in an assignment, I also want you to be filing and keeping your assignments. I still refer to my my assignments from seminary from from college a little bit, so I do want you to keep backups. If someone a document were to be lost. Um, my one requirement for the class is that you have a backup. So you can even print something out and keep it in a file somewhere. So if, 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 if a, even if we were to lose a file and I were to say, hey, I lost your file, where, can I have your backup? And you say, I don't have a backup. That's on you, you have to redo it, okay? Because that's part of the require, requirement here, it's easy. Just save it, save it in, in another file folder. You can just print it out, put it in a folder. And then if, if ever something were to be lost, maybe you, you lost it, maybe I lost it, we just have that backup. So it's just a good practice in an information age. We need to have backups. Um, we just, it's just wise. So I am requiring, you can use Google Drive, it's free. Dropbox, it's free. OneDrive, it's free. There's no cost. You have like five gigs. So there, there's no reason. If you need help, someone can help you. So if you need help setting up a, a cloud drive, just reach out to us and we can have someone help you out, okay? We're in a, a new age, a new era, and so I do want this. Um, okay, what else do we have here? Okay, we're done. Okay, so this is it. We're done with the, the syllabus. Any question or, questions or comments, and then we're gonna take our break. Any questions or comments? All right, let's begin. So let's go ahead and get back into the, the PowerPoint. So we're on to introductory issues, and uh, I wanna first begin before we look at the, defining the gospel and looking at the gospel in relationship to the, some of these other concepts that will prepare us for the big story. I do want us. I do want to to discuss. This will be very helpful for both the homework and also the discussion. So I first want to discuss how we make good observations and good questions. So if you're taking notes, uh, this would be a time to write some things down. If, if you don't have a pen or paper, it's fine. You can, you can watch this later on, on YouTube. Um, but, but this is a time right now. Uh, uh, I, I have noticed that sometimes uh, we are not so good. Uh, we're not so good at making observations or asking questions. And really the best, the best exegetes, the best preachers, the best teachers are those that really can look at the details in the text and, and they can make good observations and good questions. And I do want to clarify, it's not just any question or any observation, because some questions can never be answered by the text, and some observations don't actually get at getting at that, the, the, the heart of the issue, getting at the, the main idea of, of the text. And so 
there is a, a science and an art to asking good questions and making good observations. So here are some questions that I want you to write down. And, and as you work through your, your homework, you can write out the question and then even give the answer. If you can't find the answer, it just remains a question that we can discuss in class. Okay, so, so uh, um, your goal is to be making good observations, to be making good questions, trying to answer those questions. And then if you can't answer them, that's a time for, for, for discussion in class. So just uh, the, the first set of questions we wanna be looking at, questions related to parts of the sentence. So we're looking at, um, through a narrative, through a passage of scripture, we're looking at different questions that get at, they get at the part, the parts of the sentence that we wanna retrieve information from. So the, some of the questions that we want to ask is, uh, number one, who is the actor? Who is the one that is doing the action? That's very important. Who is the actor? So you always want to be, as you're reading the scripture, you always want to be asking the question, who is the actor? Uh, the next question is, what is the action? So you want to be also observing what is the action? So the action could be a promise. It could be a desire. It could be a, a physical action. It could be a command. It could be a warning. There's a lot of different actions, but you want to be identifying what the, the type of action is, and then what is that specific action? So there, there, there's there's different layers. You can look at timing, past, present, future. There is just so many different trajectories that you, different ways that you can go. But you want to be asking the question, what is the action? Uh, the next question that you want to be looking at is not only the the actor, but also the receiver. Who is receiving the action? Who is receiving the action? God saved us, right? So God is the one doing the action. The act is saving. We are the recipients. All right. And, and that's also a, a fundamental theological truth. We can't save ourselves. And so we always want to be also looking at the object of the action. And so um, we both could be the object or there, the, 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 the object could be an inanimate object. So it's not always a person. The object could be a thing. It could be uh, an idea, a concept. And so you want to be also identifying what is the object. Uh, how are the person or persons being described? So there's also going to be a lot of descriptions in the word of God. They'll describe, they'll, des they'll, they'll, they'll name a subject, they'll name a person, and then they give a description. There's a lot of descriptions. Uh, um, and so you always want to also be highlighting what, how is the person, whether it's an object, whether it's an actor, how is that person being described? And, and a lot of times it'll be quite illuminating when you see how that person's being described. Um, how are the actions being qualified or described? So this would be dealing with adverbs or adverbial functions. There's a lot of qualifications. What's the purpose? What's the reason? Why did the action occur? What's the cause to the action? Um, so there's a, uh, what is the means by which the action occurs? So there's a lot of these different qualifiers. And so we always wanna be asking these types of questions, okay? Uh, the next we have is related to person. So the first set of questions are really focusing at in sentences, these next set of questions, they're very similar to, to the sentence, and maybe there's even overlap between the two, but, but these questions are kind of taking a step back. You're not looking at individual sentences, and you're kind of looking at the big picture. So we're going, we're going to be looking at the big story of the Bible, and then we're looking at little stories that are our foundational turning points in that big story, okay? And so these questions, will be taking kind of the more of the bird's eye view as you look at a specific story. And so uh, it, it might be looking at the story from a comprehensive perspective. Who overall was the, uh, uh, anyway, we'll just, we'll just ask the questions and you can see what I'm saying. I don't wanna jump ahead of myself. So um, uh, looking specifically, how is God being described? So in all of these stories, God is going to be present in some way. And so we just don't wanna look at those 
those specific parts of the sentence which, without asking bigger questions. We always want to be asking, how is God being described? Or we could say, who is God in this context? How is he being described? Uh, next, what is his actions? Or what are his actions? Maybe I, I, get, I did, did an English typo there. Uh, what are the actions of God? Or, or we, we could say, what does he do? What are his works in, in this particular story? Okay. Uh, how is man described? So throughout these stories, we're going to see a lot of descriptions of man. And so we want to identify those. So, so they can be an observation or they could be a question. Like maybe the text doesn't really describe man. And so we want to say, well, well, is there some other way that we could find we, we could find this out. And so this is another question that we could ask. Uh, what is man required to do? So in almost all of these stories, man is going to be given a responsibility. And so that's part of your job to discover what is man required to do? Another question we have is how does God communicate his will and law to man? So there's there, we, we've looked first at God, or, or we could say the creator. We've looked at, we've looked at man, and then we, wanna, we want to look at the, the relationship between the two. And, and it's always God taking the first step and communicating with his creation, the creator communicating with the, the, the creation. So we want to ask, how does God communicate his will and law to man? And so in, in all of these stories, we should see, we should see something like this. Uh, what are God's promises? So uh, in this story, is there a promise? What are those promises? Maybe, maybe one story doesn't have a promise. It could, it could be. Uh, I do want to add a, a, a slight cl clarification. All, th these are a lot of questions, and I'm not saying that you have to do all of them. Th these are the types of questions that you want to be asking, that you want to be thinking about. Okay, uh, so just a couple more, a couple more related to persons. Uh, so specifically, what are God's requirements? So God will often give a requirement. What are they? What are those requirements? Uh, what is man's relationship to God? So we're looking for man's mannerisms. So how, what is his posture towards God? Sometimes it's very favorable. Sometimes it's very poor. So we want to be looking at what are man's, uh, in looking at man's relationship to God. What is man's mannerisms? Uh, characteristics and a lot of times in this relationship we can tell the relationship by the presence or absence of God okay so a lot of times looking at relationship an absence would 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 suggest a uh, separation would suggest a breakdown in relationship right the presence of God would suggest a relationship correct so I'm, I'm trying to give you some additional clues as we think about this deep question if, as we look at these stories, what is man's relationship to God? Now, here's where we get into the good stuff. Is Jesus present in the passage of Scripture? This could be implicitly, implicitly, this could be explicitly, and where? Okay, so we're not trying to put Jesus in. We're trying to see if there's, uh, he's, he's there, though. Okay, so we're not trying to put him in. Perhaps he's not there. Or perhaps he's related in some way to that story, okay? So in some instances, he's there. We're going to see in Genesis 1 and 2, Jesus is present, and, and, and the Word of God says he is. Um, but at first reading, maybe you would not see him there. So this is why we're in the Old Testament. We always want to be asking the question, is Jesus present? Whether prophetically, meaning to say that it's going to prophesy of him, maybe in a type, maybe in different things. So we want to be asking this question. We're not going to, get, we're not going to go into, down all those deep theological discussions. I just want you to be thinking about, is Jesus present? If so, where? Okay. Uh, how does this passage relate to Jesus? So if Jesus is present, or maybe he's implied, or maybe he's inferred, or maybe there's some type of relationship there, the next question we want to ask is, how does the passage relate to Jesus Christ? Okay, so we want to first identify, and then we want, then we want to make a correlation, okay? Next, we want to ask the question, so, so at, at, this, at this point, up until this last question, 
we've been looking at the specific text. So maybe it's Genesis 1 and 2, maybe it's Genesis 3, maybe it's Genesis 12, maybe it's Exodus 15. Um, up until this point, though, we've been really looking at that, that text, that story itself. This last question is now, how does Scripture, how does the Old Testament, how does New Testament writers see Jesus? Perhaps he's there. Uh, we're going to see more often than not that the New Testament writers actually actually give us, re reveal to us that Jesus is present in passages that might not have been clear to us. And so we really have to be thinking about this question, how does other scripture interpret this story? How does other scripture uh, look at this story in the context of the big story? Because one thing that we have to be thinking about is that in the New Testament, they're always looking at that big story. They're looking at the big story, and, and many times we go into the Old Testament, and we're just looking in the weeds. We're looking in the weeds, and, and he's there. We just have to take a step back and look at the, at the, at the, at the grandeur of the mountain, of, of, of the, the, the big view, and, and, and you, will see, you will see Jesus there. Um, okay, any, I'm going to take a pause there. I, I, we kind of went through there a little quick. All right, let's go ahead now. Now we're going to get into defining the gospel. So uh, the question we want to ask, before we can go and look at that, go back to Genesis, we have to first ask the question, what is the gospel according to the New Testament? And the reason why I say that we have to ask this question is because, is because we are not our own self-autonomous interpreters, okay? We are, we are members of the church, and we're members of the body of Christ. And, and Christ, number one, is the living word. He, he, is, he is the perfect revelation of, of God to man. So in, in Hebrews 1, 1 to 4, in various ways and manners, God spoke to the fathers uh, through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through his son. And then it talks about how he's the heir of all things. He's the creator. He's made purification of sins. He sat down at the right hand of God. And so, and so, um, with the coming and, 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 and the final speaking of God through Jesus Christ, Jesus has also revealed that will through his apostles. Okay, so we are not independent, autonomous people that can, that can just uh, look at Scripture any way, we, any way we please. Now, perhaps we look at it and, 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 we, and we, we, we get the gold star and we're dead on, right? But it's very... We need to be very wise, and we need to ask the question, uh, what does Jesus say about the gospel? What does his apostles say about the gospels, and, and, and about the gospel? And how does that relate to the big story before we go back and read ourselves? Okay, so again, I, I just, I'm setting the table before we, before we partake of the meal. Okay, so we're going to set the table here, all right? Now, uh, so the first question we want to ask is, what is the gospel? So the word literally means... Good news. Okay, so when you see gospel, just think uh, gospel is from an old English word, which, I mean, literally the, the, the Greek word just means good news. So sometimes it's Christianese and when we get lost, fair enough, but we just always, when you see gospel, think good news. Okay, and so then the question we want to ask is, what is the content of the gospel? So here there's a lot of confusion on what the gospel actually is. And so what I want is, what I want to do is, I want to look at several passages of scripture that just explicitly, just clearly give us a definition of what the gospel is. Uh, these are passages that I would highlight, that I would just know by memory. I, I would really be familiar with them. Let's go first to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. So turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read the passage. Now, for those who took Christianity 101, we've already discussed this passage. So um, uh, one of the, the characteristics of teaching is that through the programs that, you, through the programs that, that we offer here at EBST, we're going to have multiple touches in the same passage. They say 11 times before you get really proficient at a specific topic. So uh, for those who have already seen me discuss this, uh, Maybe you're going to see something new. I think there, there will be something that you see new, but um, this will be somewhat of a, of a review. But, but we do want to just be, be really become saturated. We want to become saturated with the word. So 1 Corinthians 15.1, we're, we're looking at, at what 
what is the definition of the gospel? What is its relationship with the big story, with the Old Testament, and relationship with man? Okay, so I'm kind of I'm really setting the table before we read the Word of God. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. What is the gospel? Let's just, I want to just highlight several things for us. We're going to look at verses three and four, and then we're going to go back to verses one and two, okay? So let's just, let's just look verse, first at three and four. I, I'll go to first, first one first. So let's just highlight the, the object, uh, or we could say the content of this, uh, this passage is really here. So this is really being highlighted. All right, so it's the gospel. It's un unquestioned. Okay, so this is a this is explicit here. Okay, and then he and then Paul describes different responses to the gospel, which we'll come back to. But then he he really he gets down to the specific. For I deliver to you of first importance what I also received. So before we get into the content of the gospel, I just want to highlight. This is an action word here. This is an action. And when I look at the I, the I, of course, is Paul. But he's not the one doing the action. He's receiving. He's receiving, okay? So then he is the one. He is the object. And then the question we want to say is, Going to back to our rep the, to our list of questions, who is the actor here? There's no actor explicit, but from our other for those who are pastors, from our other studies in New Testament, um, Paul received something. It says here he received. Who is the one giving? It was uh, it was the encounter of Paul while while he was on his way to. I think it was on his way to Jerusalem. D from Jerusalem going to Damascus, yeah. Oh, yeah, from Jerusalem going to Damascus, he encountered God. So the actor here uh, that, that has given him, uh, which he has received, it's God or Jesus Christ. Yes, no, that's great clarification. So he has encountered the risen Christ, okay? Now, I will not go here, but Galatians... One and two is a testimony of Paul. And he actually says that he received the revelation of the gospel. He received it by, by revelation from Jesus. And so, and so really, the, the, one, the one who, the, the actor here, according to Galatians, is, is Jesus Christ. And you can refer to Galatians one and two, okay? But, but what I want us to see here is that uh, this definition this understanding of the gospel was given it was a special revelation given by jesus christ himself and even though paul was not an apostle one of the the, the 12 apostles during the earthly ministry he had this special uh he was sent he was a special apostle at that same level although he would consider himself the least of these apostles sent by jesus christ okay and so uh he now has Paul, Paul now has delivered the message. So now Paul, Paul has now, uh, now he becomes the actor and he delivers it to you, to the, to the Corinthian believers, okay? So whatever it is that Paul is going to give is of, of incredible, it's of first importance. It's of first importance, okay? And so what we have here is that we have, we have several content, we have several content adjectives. So this content 
is going to give us uh, what was delivered, what was delivered, what was received, okay? So there's two of them. I'm sorry, there's three, my, my fault. There was three of them. Number one, Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. So when, we're, when, when, when someone says, what is the good news? The good news, number one, is that Christ died for our sins. All right, now, uh, um, looking at, looking at uh, this phrase here, we can further clarify this. We should see this as, a, as substitution. substitution so in our place okay so that's what we need to be thinking about so this is where we get this is where we see explicitly the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in our place for our sins okay so so there is this there is this punishment that was meted out on Jesus Christ, where we should have received it. He received it in our place. And so we see this, this action, which is terrible. It's this, it's this death, okay? So when people talk about what is the gospel, people will talk about, oh, well, it's good works. It's Jesus loving us. You know, Jesus has given us an example to follow. But it's not the most fundamental truth about the gospel, the most fundamental truth of if, if we're to, if we're to if we're to 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 polish the metal and get down to the pure level, right? We're going to repaint the car. We're going to get rid of all the dirt. We're going to get rid of the rust, the old paint. When we get down to the core of the gospel, it's that Christ has died for our sins, and we're going to see why that's so foundational in the big story. Okay, we're going to see why that is. But for now, what I want us to identify is that, is that uh, it's only good news if Christ died for our sins. So, so th this immediately speaks to problems that we have. It speaks to our, our sinful condition. It speaks to the need for someone to die. That's, that is in, of enormous significance. Correct, Diba? Um, th the next thing I want to see here is that it's not a new plan, it's not a plan B, it's not, uh, it was in accordance with the scriptures. So this, this is, we could say this is in agreement in accordance, another word would be in agreement. Now, we, uh, a question to ask, what, how do we define the scriptures? How, how would we define the scriptures? Is it the New Testament? Is it the Old Testament? Is it both? How do we further define the scriptures? That's a question that we have, all of us have. First Corinthians is one of the earliest uh, written, uh, written epistles of any of the New Testament books. And it, it, it's impossible to, to say that that the scripture is referring to the Bible. The scripture here in Paul's mind is referring to the Old Testament. The Old Testament. And so what we see here is that Christ died. It wasn't, it, the, the crucifixion wasn't unplanned. It wasn't, you know, I wanted him to start the kingdom. I wanted him to go ahead. Sion, they, they took him to the cross. This was always God's plan from the beginning, in accordance with the scriptures. Uh, not a second, not a, a Cy Young, I lost my son, but no problem, I resurrected from the dead. This was part of the Old Testament prophecies. This was, this was a fundamental component to the Old Testament. Steve, can, ahead, can, yeah. we, can, can I just uh, interrupt at this point? Right, yeah. uh, is it also correct to say that when Paul said in accordance with the scriptures, these two phrases, in accordance with the scriptures, he died for our sins and he raised the third day, 
was it also to make them assure them that it is not a makeup story by him or it's just he just got it from nowhere but it's in the bible it's like saying it's not my story it's it, i did not make this up is yeah that no, also a good yeah. no we, no that that's a great comment so it yeah it, it, it's also to validate the story that it's you're right that it's not it's not made up that there's validation in the old testament absolutely and it's also it's also to to validate the scriptures themselves, because they, they saw, they saw that he was dead and he wrote, rose again. If you continue to read down 1 Corinthians 15, there's all these witnesses that saw him and they, there's over 500 that then saw him go in, into the heavenly places. So you're correct that it is, that it is to validate the, the fact that it's more than just Paul's story, but it's also to emphasize that it's, it's confirming the Old Testament is true. It has multiple dimensions there, so that that's a great point. That's a great point, Cody Bull Boy, and 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 I I think you I think you brought it up, and I like that. Is that this is really uh, times two, <laughs> if ever, if ever you are unsure. Oh, just the death part, just the death part, not the burying and not the resurrection. <laughs> just the death part. No, it's it's the whole shebang. It's the death, the burial, and the fact that he was raised on the third that he was raised on the third day. All right. So what what I want us to see here is really this this idea that the fundamental the fundamental content of the gospel is this this death for our sins, this sacrificial death. But it's more than just the death. It's the burial and it's the resurrection. This is this is the fundamental component of the gospel and the resurrection is the validation by god that christ's sacrifice was sufficient and and that and that uh the bob because because the, the resurrection this raised from the dead this is we'll see later this is uh incorruptible incorruptible this resurrection uh you you can look at uh, we have Lazarus. We have people in the Old Testament that were raised from the dead. Um, Romans 1, 1 to 4. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7, I believe, 1 and following. It, it refers to this incorruptible life. It refers to this incorruptible life. And the, the resurrection from the dead is not simply Christ coming, Jesus coming back in the old man who's going to die again. He is brought back to life, the superman, <laughs> the incorruptible man who will never die, the, the new creation. And so uh, this is, this is uh, ginormous news for all of us because if Christ's sacrifice was sufficient for our sins and he was brought back to life, the new creation, that is incredible news for us that we can escape death. We can escape this corruptible body. Even if we died and we were brought back to life under the old, the old self, the old way, we're still going to die again. What's so uh, revolutionary about this good news is that we are brought back to life incorruptible. What is sowed in corruption is brought back with incorruption. This, this mortality must take on immortality. And, and then it will come true. The same will come true. Death, where is your sting? Uh, where is your victory? And so this is the, the, fundamental, the fundamental truth about the gospel. And we're going to see that this is answering the question back in Genesis. So we're going we're to see, I, I want you to, 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 to hold on to these truths because we're going to come right back as we go through the big story. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is that uh, this response, let's, I'm going to make a comment here. What is man's response? So Paul says, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel that I preached to you. And so there's, there's this idea of proclamation here. There's this action of proclamation, and then there is this response. 
What is the response? There's going to be several steps that happens that all of us should take great, we should be very uh, wise to listen. Number one, there has to be this reception. There has to be this reception, which you received, okay? So what did they receive? We're just going, we're going to fill in, we're going to fill in the blank. They received the gospel. So, so there is this receiving and this idea of receiving is that you embrace it, you accept it, uh, but it's more than that. What is it? Uh, not only do you receive it, but in which you stand. So, if we're going to further define this, the which we can define literally, gospel. And this is the location in which you stand. So not only are we to receive it, but we're also to stand, we're also to stand on it. We're also to stand on it, okay? And then watch this, that's not it. By which you are being saved. By which you are being saved. So not only is it the thing we're to stand on, it's the means. This is this 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 form here, the, the by this gives us means. It's the means by which we are being saved. Again, the which is the gospel. Okay, so not only are we to are we to receive it not only are we to stand on it we are to trust in it by which you are being saved uh, here this is the this is we are recipients of this salvation do you notice that you're not saving yourselves by which you are being saved the gospel is the means if we're to identify the actor here the actor is god God saves us, so we could rewrite this. God, uh, God saves us by the gospel. Does everyone see that? So we're going to rewrite this so it's it's really clear. Let's. God saves us by the gospel, and then lastly, we have this. We have this condition. We have this condition here. There's a condition. Uh, Alex, we, Alex, Alex, we had a discussion earlier about baptismal regeneration and about the need to be baptized as a condition to salvation. And here, we don't have a condition for baptism that, that saves us. We have the condition of holding fast to the word. Holding fast to the word that I preached to you, and this is the gospel. Everyone sees that? And we could, we could another word for holding fast, a, a synonym word for this is faith. Or we could say belief. If you cling to the gospel... You are being saved by the gospel if you cling to the gospel, if you have faith in the gospel. Um, that I preach to you unless you believed in vain. And so there is really this need. We talked about in our other class uh, in, in Romans, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, the, the righteous live by faith. Our understanding, we think of faith as just this one-time event. But here, clearly, it's almost parallel to Romans 1, 16, 17. Um, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, just as it has been written, the righteous shall live by faith. Here, we are called to, to receive the gospel, to stand on the gospel. We are being, uh, God is saving us through the gospel, but what is, what is our response? Again, coming back here. What is our response? Cling to the gospel. 
have faith in the gospel, uh, believe in the gospel, this present tense. And so here, what we, what we clearly, we get a, a picture into what the gospel is at its core, at its core. Um, let, let's go back to the PowerPoint. And let's just highlight some, some, main, some main points here. It's getting late, and so we're going to have to stop, which is fine. We'll just continue this next week, and then we'll, we'll go into, the, we'll go into the, the big story. Of, but right now, we're getting the, the, the core. We're getting the core of the big story right now. So let, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Just a couple of, of truths that I want us to contemplate concerning defining the gospel. So right now we're defining the gospel. Um, the Messiah. So when, you, when we see Christ, when we see Christ uh, died for our sins, the word Christ is literally Messiah or anointed one. So this is, we kind of like, well, what's Christ? It's, it's the Jewish Messiah. It, we're going to see later in this big story that the Christ is such a rich term in the Old Testament. It is, it is uh, so important in the Old Testament story. And so the Messiah died for our sins. The second thing I want us to see is that the Messiah was resurrected by God. Okay, so this is another fundamental component. And you could add there, the Messiah was resurrected by God incorruptible uh incorruptible the, the the first fruits of the new creation we can add that there so I, I i do want you to add the messiah was resurrected by god the the first fruits of the new creation um the third thing and i'm really i'm really driving the point out i'm really teasing the point out here God declared this would happen in the Old Testament. If ever there was confusion, no more. This was God's sovereign, perfect plan that the Messiah would die for our sins and would be resurrected the new man. Okay, this was, this was a fundamental component to the Old Testament. And I saw Alex's question. I will answer it. God declared it in the Old Testament. The the last thing that I want us to see here is what is our response? Number one, preach it. So we do have a duty to preach it, okay? I didn't really highlight that before, but, but uh, we, have a, we have this calling to proclaim it. Uh, number two, we have to experience it. I, I, I will always go back to, to what Henry said tonight and even before, that Paul had this experience, this Damascus experience. Um, we have to experience the gospel. Um, we have to stand on the gospel. So we're not standing on our works. We're not standing on our baptism. We're not standing on our church membership. We are standing on the gospel. Our only hope, our only hope to escape from death is the gospel. It's not our church membership. It's not our baptism. It's not uh, anything else. Now, I do want to clarify that if we are truly committed to the gospel, there are things that will follow. We, we will want to be baptized. We will want to be participate in the church. So I'm not saying those things are inconsequential, but there's a difference between an outworking and the foundation. There's a difference between the window of a building and the foundation of a building, and we can't confuse the two. And so the last thing is that we Hold fast to the gospel. And so maybe this is a truth that might be new to you. Um, the gospel is not just for our conversion. It's also for our sanctification. Um, we, we stand on the gospel every day. We hold fast to the gospel every day. That's not to say that we could lose our salvation. That is to say that when, when we are brought into union with Christ, when we cling to Jesus in, 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 in faith, the Holy Spirit uh, has done this incredible work. He's transformed us. We're, 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 we're part of this new creation as well spiritually. And God equips us. He, he gives us the ability to, to, to cling every day, to, 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 to hold fast, to stand. And so our calling is to do these things, okay? And, and, and we'll go into more, to, to more, to more detail. I do want to... I'll end the, the PowerPoint tonight, and I want us to see this big picture because looking at the Old Testament, there's a whole lot of death. 
looking at Old Testament, there's a whole lot of sin. Looking at the Old Testament, there's a need for this sacrifice of sins. Um, and so the gospel, I, I, I think that we're beginning to see that, okay, wow, the, the foundational component of the gospel, I can start seeing it more in the Old Testament. Maybe, maybe I didn't see it as much there in the past. And so I, I do at this, at this point just want to emphasize, lastly, that the gospel was promised in the Old Testament. And we're, as we continue to work through these introductory issues, we'll see how, how much it's in the Old Testament. So we're, we're still in those, those, that introductory phase. And um, uh, we are going to end the class now because our time has passed. I do want to answer several questions. So let me just check to see what, um, to see what Alex says. Alex says here, I just want to ask in the Old Testament specific book and verse that states that Jesus died on the cross and resurrected on the third day was an original plan of God. Okay, Alex, this is uh, yes. So we will we will discuss we will discuss this uh, throughout the semester. I will just give one passage just to whet your appetite. In John three, Jesus says, as the serpent in the wilderness was lifted up, so the Son of Man will be lifted up. Okay? And then it goes into the, the famous passage that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. One explicit example describing the, the dying on a cross explicitly would be this, the, the serpent being lifted up in the wilderness is actually a type of Christ being lifted up on the cross. Maybe, maybe that's not uh, how we would imagine. We're looking for a specific uh, verse and, 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 and uh, reference. And um, I would say that it's there in, in, in the type. And, of course, Jesus says it. It comes from Jesus' own words. So uh, I, we can take it to the bank for, for that one. Um, the, the other passage that really emphasizes um, uh, Jesus also refers to Jonah just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. So the son of man will be in the, the earth will be, will be dead for three days and three nights. I, maybe I'm butchering that, that quotation a little bit, but so Jonah would be another example. The, 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 the event of Jonah being in the belly of the whale for three days prophesies of Jesus's death and being buried in the ground for three days and then rising from the dead. And again, that's, that's an example from Jesus. And so, uh, we will continue to answer the question of Alex. The other passage that we could go to and discuss some other time would be, um, you have the Lamb, the Lamb of God. You also have the, the Isaiah 53. But we're, we, will, we will touch on those more during the semester. So great question, Alex. Okay, so someone asked about getting a, a copy of the slide. Yes, yeah, so I will, I, will try, I, will post, I will post a picture of the slide of working, working through the passage uh, maybe sometime this week. Um, so, so great, great suggestion. Um, uh, actually, Simon. So it's a great suggestion, Simon. Okay, so we're finished tonight. Um, what I want to do is let's, let me give you the homework. I have an example of the homework. I want to go over the homework with you. So I will post this in a Word document in the, I will post this in the group page in the Word document. So this is a, uh, uh, this is how I want the homework to be turned in. So whether you're a group that's turning it in or whether you're a C CT, um, Certificate of Theology, so you're going to want to put the name, which is just EBST. You want to put the name of your program that you've chosen, so you would be either CM or CT. I think um, maybe one MAT, but we have to discuss that. Uh, and then, again, my name and the email address, your name, or uh, include those in your group. So include those in your group here. And then also the assignment. This will be assignment number one. And then the due date, which would be next Wednesday. And then the date you submitted. So if you submit it early, put that date. If you submit it late, put that date as well. Okay. Now instructions. Okay. So instructions here. It, this, this is, uh, 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 these are the instructions. So for the, for the, for the certificate of ministry, those who sign up for the certificate of ministry, your assignment for next week is to read Genesis 1 and 2 and also for, uh, the Gospel of John, verses 1 to 17. And I, because you're a group, um, 
I'm looking for 15 total observations and or questions. Okay, so looking at the questions that I gave, uh, you can use those and maybe, maybe you can't answer the observation. That's, that's fine. If you can't answer the question, that's fine. Try to answer the question. If you can't, that's fine. But I want either an observation or a question. So there's just 15 of them. So what I want you to do is I want you to read through the passages and then look at those lists of questions that I gave you and then make application. So ask those specific questions. In creation, who is the actor? In creation, who is the object? Who is being created? In creation, what is the action? Oh, the action is creation. So these are these are one sentence questions, one sentence answers. They're not long explanations. You can make the observation, God is the actor in creation. Man is part of the creation. And there's many different types of actions in Genesis 1 and 2. There's many different actions in Genesis in, in John 1, 1 to 17. So just be applying those questions and observations to these passages. Okay, so the CM, you're going to do Genesis 1 and 2, uh, and then John 1, 1 to 17, okay? CT, you have more. <laughs> so you, you have less because it's just one. There's only one of you. So I'm only looking for 10 total observations or questions for the CT students, but you have more reading. So if you look here, I'm giving an additional Psalm 8, which is only eight or nine verses. You have for, uh, John 1, 1 to 17. You have Colossians 1, 15 to 25. So that's 10 verses. You have Hebrews chapter 1, really all of chapter 1, 1 to 14. Uh, there actually should be one more here. There should be Revelation 4 and 5. Revelation 4 to 5. Okay? So if you're CM and you want to add these other passages, that's fine. Okay? But I'm, I'm really only looking for the, the, those passages that I signed you and, and 15 total observations and questions. And that's for, this is the group. You're in a group, okay? This is individual, okay? And then once you're done, just email it to me, okay? Now there's extra credit. <laughs> I will give you five bonus points. Five bonus points if you do the extra credit, okay? That's, that's long. You're gonna read Isaiah 40 to 53, and specifically, you're looking for any reference to God as creator um, or his works of creation, okay? So if, if you can imagine, what I want you to be seeing here is looking to see if there's references to God as creator or creation. Um, just write down the passage, the verse where you, where you found it. So it could be referring to God creating light. It could be referring to God being a creator. It could be any, anything related to God's creation, okay? God, God's creative acts, okay? That's, a, that's, that's five bonus points, okay? Um, this is primarily a completion grade. So I'm not going to be grading you and saying, that's not a good question, minus one. I'm not going to do that, okay? I just want you to go through the process. At the beginning, your questions and observations might be cool on. That, that's fine. It might be, they might be, you might think, oh, I'm not so good. That's fine. You will develop the skill and become better later, okay? And so here I've set this up. This is already double-spaced. I want your, your questions and observations to be double spaced, okay? And so I will post this doc X. Literally, you just fill this in, and then you just type this out, boom, and then email it to me, okay? Any questions or comments? Is this making sense for you? Uh, the groupings, can we have our own group or you will, decide, or you will decide who will be our group members? Okay, so yeah, so so, with the CT, I said here that you can, you need to submit, each, each CT student needs to submit his own assignment, but you can work together with other CT students, okay? But it should be individual. Only the CM, only the CM are, are in a group where they're gonna be submitting it as a group. I will let you make up your own groups, okay? Uh, um, uh, I will not, I will, I will let that be for you. If you don't have a group and you want to join a group, reach out to me. Okay, let's, it's already late. So we're going to go ahead and close. I'm, in, I'm just going to close in prayer. I will post the rest of the passages of scripture for the introductory uh, PowerPoint so that if you want to also look at those in advance, uh, 
you can as well. It's not required, but optional. But, but I hope that we really, this next two weeks, we, we need to get the, 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 the core of the gospel down, and then we're going we're gonna to proceed into the, into the Old Testament. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. And I hope that this was a blessing for you. I hope that you learned something new tonight. And um, really, our, our only hope is in the gospel, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and that he, he uh, was, was, was raised from the dead for our sins. And, and he took our sins, the sacrifice for our sins, and he gave us his righteousness. And so this, this great transaction the giving of, our, of his righteousness to us, the taking of our sins, is called the great exchange. And we say we're in union with Christ. What's true of Christ is true of us. And so let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we leave tonight, may, may we really hold fast to this deep truth that uh, Christ died for our sins, that, that uh, right now we are under, under the penalty of, of sin, and the penalty of, of that sin is, is death, both physical death and eternal death. Um, but Father God, in your grace, you've sent your son. He has paid the penalty um, in his flesh on the cross. And you have vindicated him and resurrected him as the new man, the new creation, the first fruits of, of the new resurrection, Father God, the, the, the firstborn from the dead. And so Father, uh, um, we have hope because he lives. And, and because he lives as this uh, one who has incorruptible life. Father God, I hope and trust that we would cling to this truth. We'd stand by it. We'd proclaim it. We would, we would believe in it every day, Father God. It, it, it is our hope. And as we, we continue through this semester, may we really look at this deep truth that the gospel is, is present throughout the Old Testament. You're always calling us to turn from our sin you, you've made a covering for our sins in the Old Testament that was anticipating that great covering, uh, that great sacrifice made by Jesus Christ. Um, you have made uh, covenants with man to bring about uh, your salvation, to bring about your will. And Father God, we, we, we cling to the sacrifice of Jesus, and we thank you so much for the proclamation of it in the Old Testament. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen.